Hello, everybody. I'm Dean Linky, along with my broadcast partner, Keith Tabatsik, and we are getting ready for the best of the best. Number one, Akron, and number two, Tulsa. I'll tell you what, that storyline says it all. Well, it does say it all. We've often said it doesn't get much better than this. Well, Dean, it doesn't get better than this. One and two, and there's a reason. Akron, they don't let the other team play with the ball very often. They have shut out every team they've played this year. Tulsa, on the other hand, they lead the country in goals per game. The question is, can Tulsa get the ball up to their big men up top so that they can try to win this? This game. Both teams, by the way, three Herman Mack Award finalists on both teams, Dean. All right, Tom McIntosh has been Mr. Consistent, but how about the job young 35-year-old Caleb Porter is doing here at Akron? Oh, it's amazing. In his fifth year right now, I mean, everybody is afraid to play Akron. I mean, they, they are the best team in the country. They were you know, arguably the best team in the country last year, despite losing in penalty kicks to Virginia in the national final. They've just picked up where they left off. And Akron and Tulsa, not your only undefeated teams. No, they're not. They're two of six undefeated teams, Dean. All right, let's take a look now at the NSCAA, HendrickCars.com. Top 25, number one, Akron, number two, Tulsa. Who else you like, Keith? Well, let's jump to another undefeated team. That's Monmouth, led by Ryan Kinney's five goals. Robbie McCourt doing it again with Monmouth. Connecticut, they're inching up right now. When Connecticut scores goals, you're in trouble, boy. I tell you, they've got 15 goals for this year. Louisville, only two goals against. They've also been moving up in the ranks. They're un undefeated. SMU jumped nine spots with an overtime win last week over Creighton as well. All right, when we flip to the second 10, we saw Duke last week against North Carolina. How about number 12, St. John's? Yeah, well, St. John's jumped off eight spots, but now it really starts for them. The Big East play starts this week, and they're at Notre Dame, a tough challenge for Davey Mazur's team. Also, UCLA and California, the Pac-10 teams in there. California also jumped nine spots for Kevin Grimes' team. And then if you go down there, Butler, that's one of the other teams. They haven't been beat. They haven't been tied. Also, two goals against for the Horizon League team. And but Wake Forest dropped another game midweek at Charleston, and Jay Vitovich got the work cut out for him. Boy, they lost a lot of players. And in the final five, some Ivy League love. We do. And uh, congratulations to Pat Laughlin and Brown. Hey, how about Pat Laughlin? Two years ago, he's the head coach at Maine. They discontinue the program. He becomes Mike Noonan's assistant for a year. Mike goes to Clemson. He becomes the head coach, and he's got them in there at number 22 at 4 0 and 2. All right, Keith, your top 25 are brought to you by HendrickCars.com. 80 franchises, 5,000 cars, over 100,000 photos. One website, HendrickCars.com, the fastest way to buy a used vehicle. Let's take a look now at the NSCAA Players of the Week. How about Juan Castillo, number 16? He's just a freshman lighting it up in Conference USA. He is your Player of the Week for SMU. On the men's side and on the women's side, the Tar Heels, they suffered a big loss to Boston College, but a big week, though, for Alyssa Rich. She is the Player of the Week from the Tar Heels, and those are your men's and women's NSCAA Players of the Week. And what a statement here in front of a record crowd. The number one team in the country, led by Coach Caleb Porter, showing why they're number one. They beat number two, Tulsa. Golden Hurricane. It's Akron for Tulsa zero. And Keith Tabatsik, when you roll to the highlights, Akron put on a show. This was as thorough as it gets. They kept the ball the whole time, and they finished on their chances. This is just in the ninth minute. Darlington Nagby playing the ball across. Kofi Sarkoti forward from his right back position, cuts inside, left foot shot. The flex off Gonzalez's head, pass Ray Clark into the goal. One nothing for Akron right there. That was his second goal of the year for Sarkoti coming up from the right side. Now we have the corner kick, not too many minutes later. Nanchoff plays it in. Nagby heads it back across, and that's Perry Kitchen for his third goal. He gets the goals off these restarts. All of a sudden, it's 2 0. Tulsa has a long way to go, and boy, early in the second half, it became even longer. Just a few minutes in, Ampai Patakwan playing the corner kick in, and that's Maddox with his third goal of the year. The Jamaican Youth International gets on the boards. 3 0. And then look at this. Look at Nagby holding the ball. He's like, fouled there. Referee lets it go on. Well done to the referee off the crossbar. And here's Anthony Epipatagwan getting his goal, a goal and assist for him. 4 0 for Akron. They set the, they tie the shutout record down in the NCAA with 11 consecutive. And they do it in front of a record crowd. And of course, this game is brought to you by the good folks from the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. Reminding you that the NSCA convention is the world's largest annual gathering of soccer coaches. And you don't want to miss the 2011 convention in Baltimore, Maryland, January 12th through 16. To learn more about the convention and the NSCAA, visit NSCAA.com.